13, come in, please. Sector number 13, come in, please. Sector number 13, come in, please. Sector number 13, in. Stand by. Mr. Andre, we're all ready for you, sir. you 15 sectional chiefs to this radio rendezvous to brief you on the situation regarding Project A. We've tried for two years to get an agent on that space station, but due to impregnable security precautions, we have been unable to do so. I have orders from the minister himself that we must not fail in destroying this perpetually menacing eye in the sky, and it must be done within two months, without fail. Therefore, I must have information on every person who might be sent to that space station. I have 300 operatives who are typed to resemble all leading scientists in the field. Due to money or family or some other reason, these people are under our absolute control. Your job will be to use every man, to keep these scientists under absolute surveillance, insofar as possible to monitor everything they say and do. My assistant will now transmit to you names and addresses of those people we wish followed. Make this a 24-hour job. Calling the San Francisco sector. Here is a special list for your attention. John Adams, Henry Burns. Stand by. Yes? We have information on the next man to make the trip. You yeah, have. Why don't you find this out? Just a second. I'll call Mr. Roundtree. Mr. Roundtree? Yes. Important call for you, sir. Round three here. Your man for Project A is Dr. Werner. Repeat, Dr. Werner. W-E-R-N-H-E-R. -E he is scheduled to leave for the objective within 48 hours. Sam, check the files. See if we have a Dr. Werner, W-E-R-N-H-E-R. -E See if we have a double for him. Quickly. Well, here you are, sir. We have a double for him, all right. <laughs> He's in San Francisco <laughs> under Section Chief 3. Exact resemblance, except for the hair. Oh, that's easy to fix. Now, here's your plan of action. Dr. Werner is staying at the Central Hotel in room 524. I'll have a set of photographs to you within 15 minutes. Surround the hotel with a cordon of operatives. Get a room as close to him as possible, preferably next door. I'll be there within two hours to take charge of the operation myself.
Ready here. Testing. One, two, three, four. All right, Sam. We'll be able to hear everything that goes on. Come on. You keep your ear glued to that receiver until you're relieved. Mr. Rountree, Dr. Werner just came in. Hello? This is General Green speaking. Oh, yes, General. Delighted to hear from you. I expected that you would call me. Yes. All arrangements have been completed for the circumlunar flight. Good, good. Yes. I have all my uh, preparations completed. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You'll make arrangements through the local transportation office. Good. Fine. Thank you. Hope to see you soon, sir. Goodbye. Where is that devil? Werner might be leaving any moment. He'll be here shortly. His plane arrived at the airport 25 minutes ago. Finally. Sorry I was detained. It's all right. Please be seated. Thank you. You know your job. I know. You must destroy the space station. According to all my available information, there is only two ways of doing it. One, by getting into the bomb room of the station and setting off one of the bombs. Two, by taking control of the moon ship, which you're scheduled to take, and ramming it into the station. Do you understand? I understand. Sam, take him into the dressing room and match his hair to that photograph. Yes, sir. Come on. Well, how does the hair look? Fine. Shh. Yes, this is Dr. Werner. Why, yes, Colonel, I've been waiting for you. A car in front of the hotel in 10 minutes. Good. I'll be there, sir. Yes. An official car. I'll watch for the insignia. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. He's going to leave in 10 minutes. Good. Uh, desk? Uh, Werner here. Uh, send a man up for my bags, please. Thank you. Send for a bell hop. Come in. Oh, you, uh, take these uh, two bags here and uh, I'll take the briefcase. How did you get here so quickly? Ready here. Move. Well, do I look like him? If you don't, we wasted a full year looking for you for this assignment. Now remember, your job is to destroy that space station. Don't worry, I know my job. Your credentials, Dr. Werner. Just a moment. Come in. You rang, sir? Uh, yes, uh, you take those two bags and I'll, uh, I'll take this briefcase. Uh, please use the front entrance. Do you want a cab, sir? Uh, no, I'm expecting a car, an official car. waiting for you, sir. Thank you. And our doctor will rush you through security. This way, please. Sergeant, the bags. You see, Bill, according to my calculus, 36 million miles should be equal to the ratio of 67 million miles Yes, what is it? Dr. Werner has arrived and is going through security, sir. Good. Tell him I'll meet him for the briefing as soon as possible. Uh, say within a half hour. Well, that's a break. 
I was afraid we'd have to cancel just because one uh, confounded civilian was going to be late. If you please, sir, uh, I don't really see why we have to take him at all. McIntosh and I can photograph the back face of the moon without help. A uh, lot of politics in these things, boy. If we hadn't played the science angle, we wouldn't have gotten the authorization, nor the money. This round-the-moon flight is a necessary step to the establishment of a lunar base. And you know how badly the country needs that base. Yes, sir. And I'm mighty pleased that you ought to be the pilot. Now, I hated to bump you out of the honor of making the first orbital flight, Bill, but, uh, well, it just had to be Bright Eyes. You know our reasons. Well, that's years past and long done with, sir. Bright Eyes is a good pilot. I'd be the first to admit it. You used to like Bright Eyes, eh? <laughs> Frankly, sir, uh, Captain Bright Eyes was a nice mm -hmm. kid, but, well, Colonel Bright Eyes is a little hard to swallow. Ah, Lindbergh got promoted from Captain to Colonel for less. The president simply followed the established precedent. I suppose so, sir. Anyhow, this makes up for it. Being the first man to fly around the moon is all any pilot can ask for. A crash priority from the White House, sir. Notify me immediately on Colonel Brightheiser's arrival and cut the orders accordingly. Yes, sir. Oh, no, sir. Not again. They can't do this, sir. Sit down, Bill, and take it easy. You saw where those orders originated? Well, yes, sir, but I... I said sit down, Bill, and take it easy. Here, have a smoke. Sir, there are 50 reporters outside with about six truckloads of cameras. They tell me Bright Eyes is going to... Yes, I know, Bob. Route them through PRO and security and set up the briefing room. We'll have to rush to get this through before blastoff. Oh, Bill. <sighs> yes, sir? I'm sending you as co-pilot. What? No, sir. I mean, well, excuse me, sir, but if it's all the same to you, leave McIntosh as co-pilot. I'd just as soon not have the honor. Besides, uh, well, it wouldn't be fair to McIntosh. It's not a matter of being fair. This isn't some schoolboy game. This trip has got to be successful. Besides, I have more confidence in you than I have in McIntosh. Or Bright Eyes. But if it were any other pilot, sir. Of course, I could go through the Joint Chiefs to the President, make a squawk, but that would mean postponing the flight. No, sir, don't do that. I'll do it. Good boy. Thanks, Bill. Colonel Bright Ice is here, sir. Send the Colonel in. Polly Prattles is with the Colonel, sir. What? Oh, very well. Send them both in. Colonel Bright Ice reporting is ordered, sir. <laughs> My dear General. Oh, how handsome you look. You know, I told the President I was so delighted at this opportunity of seeing you again. Now, about this moon flight of yours... Uh, thank you, Miss Prattles, but um, we're having a press conference in a few minutes. Oh, but General, I hoped you might give me an exclusive. I'm very sorry, Miss Prattles. Policy, you know. The President told Polly she could interview us. What? Oh, very well, Miss Prattles. I'll give you 15 minutes here before the meeting in the briefing room. Will that do? Oh, just lovely. But in the meantime... Let... We're all set up for the press conference and TV broadcast, sir. Well, thanks, Charlie. Oh, will you take Miss Prattles and Major Moore for a cup of coffee and bring them back here in about 20 minutes? I have a few classified matters to discuss with the Colonel. Highly classified. Colonel, I'm sending Major Moore as your co-pilot. Bill Moore! Oh, no, General, you can't. And why not? The big lug hates me. He's jealous of me. No, you'll have to pick someone else. Now, you listen to me, Bright Eyes. Bright Tice, if you please. Shut up, Bright Eyes, and listen to me. Major Moore is the best pilot we have, better than you are. But I don't understand Pipe why you... Pipe down! If he'd weighed 90 pounds instead of 180, he'd be a colonel and a public hero, and you'd still be a captain. But you got the orbital flight. You got the ticker tape parades and all the rest. And ever since, you've been too big for your britches. Get me? No, I don't. One, colonels don't say no to generals. Two, you're not a superwoman, you're a spoiled brat. Three, 
Any more guff out of you and I'll turn you over my knee and spank you. If you do, I'll shout the whole place down. I might add that this room is soundproof. You wouldn't dare. You want to try me? No. No, sir. All right. Now that we understand each other, let's talk about this flight, shall we? A rocket flight from the Earth directly to the moon is still beyond the capacity of our best ships. But now that we have a satellite station in space revolving around the Earth, a satellite due, I might add, directly to the heroic first orbital flight by Colonel Breitheis four years ago. Now that we have a space station, it is at last possible to send a ship from the station all the way around the moon. On this trip, Dr. Werner will photograph the back face of the moon. The ship will then return to the space station. Oh, I think that's just lovely. Uh, I'm so glad a girl is going to do it, and so will all my readers be. But, General, what's the purpose of all this? Uh, what do you mean, Miss Prattle? Well, my editor, oh, an old bear, nothing ever suits him. Well, he says this whole thing is a boondoggle, just another way of wasting tax money. Now, what am I to tell him? A fair question, Miss Prattles. This round-the-moon flight is a necessary step before establishing a base on the moon. It's a, a survey flight. Maybe someday the statesmen will make military bases and military men unnecessary. If so, fine. But in the meantime, if there is going to be a base on the moon, and there will be, it's my business to see that it's in safe hands. Our own. Ma'am, the most important thing in the world to me is the military security of the United States. And I'm not in the least bit apologetic for my attitude. I wonder, General, could you tell me something about this wonderful space station of yours? Yes. That would be very interesting, General. Well, I can give you a rough idea. The station is a titanium hull with steel bracing. 350 feet in diameter. It rotates completely around the Earth in a transpolar orbit about 10 times a day. At present, the station is in a state of freefall. Freefall? Could you explain that a little more? Well, of course. When we speak of freefall, we simply mean that the station and everything in it are moving around the Earth at a speed which is great enough so that it cannot fall toward the Earth. But it is also moving at a speed which is not great enough in order to enable it to go out into space. Therefore, the forces of gravity and speed are now in balance. And as a result, nothing in the station has any weight. No weight? What a wonderful idea. You mean if I went there, I wouldn't wear anything? Nothing at all. Oh. As a matter of fact, you'd have to wear magnetic shoes to keep you on the floor. And you could walk on any one of the walls or the ceiling. I wonder, General, could I arrange to go there, to the space station? Well, hardly, Miss Prattles. You see, at the present time, it cost the government just about $300 a pound to send anything to the station. And consequently, our personnel must all weigh less than 160 pounds. Oh, it would be so lovely to weigh nothing at all. <laughs> well. I have heard of the H-bomb, General. Isn't it dangerous living and working so near to it? I'm very sorry, Doctor, but that's a highly classified subject. Attention, please. General Green, your rocket ship number three, Canada, ready for takeoff to space station. We'll leave you here and I'll take the doctor to the Canada. Happy landing. Happy landing, sir. Colonel Bright Ice, your ship is fuel. Checkoff list completed. Do you need any help? No, thank you, Major. I'm perfectly capable of getting into the rocket myself. <laughs> I strap you in, Colonel. No, thank you, Major. Are your ship-to-ship -ship and ship-to-blockhouse frequencies operating? Incoming only, Colonel. Orders are to keep the channels clear until the Canada blast off. Canada to blockhouse. Request permission to start pumps. Permission granted. Canada to blockhouse. Request permission to blast off. Permission granted. 
You are minus 10 seconds. Mark, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire! Procedure, Captain. Yes, Colonel. Mexico to Blockhouse. Request permission to start pumps. Permission granted. Mexico to Blockhouse. Request permission to blast off. Blockhouse to Mexico. Clearance granted. You are minus 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, five. Blockhouse, acceleration complete. Request ballistic check. Blockhouse to Mexico, tracking to flight plan. We will continue to observe you. Over. Mexico to Blockhouse, thank you. Over and out. Rocket ship Mexico to space control. Request instructions for contact. Space control to Mexico. Steady as you go. We will warp you to pocket three. Space control to Mexico. Prepare to receive line. Control to lock three. Bring them in. Mexico to lock three, disembarking, over and out. I must report immediately. See you before you leave. I'll be with you as far as weight control. Major. Hope you enjoyed the trip, Colonel. Happy landings, Bill. Thank you, Captain.
please be seated. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you again, Colonel, Major. Please strap yourself in, Colonel. You know, I'm particular about these things. You're in free fall. The General has asked me to brief you on the conditions of this shoot. As you know, it's to be a second lunar flight. Colonel Brighteyes will pilot, Major Moore co-pilot. Dr. Werner will do the photographic and scientific work as you pass around the back face of the moon. I think we should attempt a landing, sir. One step at a time, Colonel. There'll be only a 25 second margin of fuel over and above that calculator that's necessary for the flight and resumption of the orbit with the station. Therefore, you must proceed exactly according to your flight plan. If you make this one all right, we may give you a crack at the first moon landing. This is lock four, sir. The Magellan is fueled and ready according to plan. Checkoff list completed. You'll blast off in 37 minutes. It's yours, Colonel. Man your ship. Good luck. Magellan to lock four, all secure, shove off. Lock four to Magellan, shoving off on count of 10. Magellan to space control, check starting coordinates, over. Your ordinates are Polaris 83 degrees, 62 minutes, axis A. Regulus, 180 degrees, 29 minutes, axis B. Pomelhof, 19 degrees, 2 minutes, axis C. Report when you are in proper attitude, over. Major swing, Colonel. right about two degrees. Nose south, one degree. Little more down, hold it. Back. Steady. Hold it. Mark. Rocket ship Magellan to space control. We are now correctly aligned. Over. You have 13 seconds to blast off. Mark. 13. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. controlling the ship now. As you can see by the lights in the tape control, the autopilot is keeping us on our computer track with the ship in its proper attitude. I see. Ordinarily, the rocket jets are controlled by the autopilot, but the pilot can always fire by hand. Now, if I were to throw this switch, I would override the automatic pilot and the jets would fire. So, but how would you guide it? Well, you don't exactly steer a rocket since there's nothing out there to grab hold of. You must first turn it by the flywheels, and then it is held steady by the gyroscopes while you fire the jets. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Thank you very much.
Like this? That can't work now. The co-pilot board is dead. I wouldn't touch it, though. Sorry. Think nothing of it, Doctor. The Major doesn't like for someone else to play with his toys. But that's enough now. I'll give you another lesson tomorrow. I think we have the cameras adjusted now. Uh, they can run by themselves for an hour or two. But doctor, you haven't set the automatic trip yet. <laughs> Stupid of me. How would you like some breakfast? Uh, I'd be glad to fix it. Oh, fine. And while you're back after, I think I'll warm up the radio. We'll be back inside of Earth soon. Maybe I can find out how the World Series came out. I suppose you're a Dodger fan, huh? Excuse me? Oh, I, uh... I thought you used to teach in Brooklyn. Well, that's right, surely. Uh, I'll go below. You see if you can raise Earth. Colonel. Colonel, wake up. What is it, Bill? That guy Werner, he's a phony. What? Explain yourself. He knows too much about rockets and not enough about photography. I know more about his cameras than he does. I think you're imagining things. I am, am I? He's supposed to be from Brooklyn, and he's never even heard of the Dodgers. Look, I don't know what his game is. Maybe it's sabotage. What's there to sabotage? Major, I think you're space happy. And it's all we can do. You pilot, I'll take care of him. Right now, move. What?
should be hearing the first report from the Magellan in about 40 seconds. She's slated to come around the Terminator at that time. Price priority from security, sir. Listen to this. The man representing himself as Dr. Werner has been identified as enemy agent. Actual Dr. Werner found by FBI. Get on that space phone with the Magellan immediately and keep on it until you get it. fuel left. We can't take off. Sorry to have gone female on you, Major. I didn't mean to take advantage of it. That's all right. I'm feeling kind of punchy myself. What do you think we should do? You asking my advice? Officially? Yes. Officially. Well, uh, in that case, I, uh, I think you better powder your nose. Go soak your head. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get rid of him. What are you going to do with him? What can we do with him? Well, I, uh, I could shove him through the airlock. But instead, I think I'll tie him up in the storeroom. I've got an idea about him for later on. What is it? Don't worry. It'll be rough. But uh, now we've got more important things to worry about. How much food there is, how much water, how much air, and which one runs out first. Oh, Bill, they'll rescue us. Certainly they will. How? Oh. How will they find us? We've been out of radio communication ever since we went around behind the moon. I don't even know where we are. We probably landed out of sight of Earth. Might as well be on Neptune. You can feed tape into the computer. Okay. No report from the Magellan, sir. She is now exactly 18 minutes, 14 seconds overdue. That agent must have done something. Why, they couldn't be even 40 seconds overdue if they were in their orbit. They've been interfered with in some way or another. Order a continuous radar surveillance of all their area in their emerging sector and keep an operator on that radio until we hear from them. Where are we located? Well, according to my calculations, we're about 125 miles past the crater Grimaldi, 
and approximately 11 miles from the furthest position from which we could beam a signal to the satellite station. Bill, could you possibly rig a relay for us on one of those mountain peaks in that direction? I don't know. Our oxygen tanks on our spacesuits only carry a four-hour supply. We have sufficient space, radio, and television equipment aboard, so it uh, wouldn't be too difficult. If I could make it. Oh, Bill, you must. You must. Well, there's only one way I can do it. I'll have to go down and get Warner and take him with me. Warner, get up. We've landed on the moon. Since we're beyond radio reach of the Earth, I have to go out and set up a relay. And you're coming with me. Our lives depend upon us doing this quickly. But I'll have to warn you. It's a gamble whether or not we'll ever make it. All right. I'm with you. I wouldn't have done this if I'd been forced into it. Let's go. And remember, one false move and you get this. Happy landing. Bill, do you read me? Come in, Bill. We're all right. We're about at the point where we can establish contact. I'll call you back in about two hours.
You must get back, Bill. You must. Magellan to Spacehawk, come in, please. Magellan to Spacehawk, Magellan to Spacehawk, come in, please. Magellan to Spacehawk, Magellan to Spacehawk, come in, please. Did you make it work? I'm afraid not, Bill. I've been trying for five hours and nothing's happened. The poor screen monitor switches now. Should it be? Yes. I hooked our emergency relay to tie in with the four television ones. Press number three on your board. Now try. Spacecom to Magellan, we read you. Sir, we have the Magellan now. Now press your four selector switch. Good. Spacecom to Magellan. General Green speaking. Colonel Bright Ice. Will you please get Dr. Warner out of the cabin? I have a classified message for you. Scramble, code Y, combo three. He's not in the cabin, sir. Are you sure that he can't hear me? Quite sure, sir. Colonel, listen carefully. Make him a prisoner at once. Take him alive if you can, but don't take any chances. He isn't Dr. Werner. He's a spy. He plans to take control of the Magellan and crash it into the space station. The FBI have just rescued the real Dr. Werner. Yes, sir, we know. Repeat. Dr. Werner is dead. You see, he did try to take over the ship, and Major Moore stopped him. But in the struggle, the jets were fired, and I found it necessary to land on the moon. But we didn't have enough fuel... Repeat! You did what? We had to land on the moon. Commodore, get me a channel through the Pentagon immediately. The Magellan has just landed on the moon. Colonel, report your present situation in detail. Yes, sir. Landed on Luna approximately 125 miles back of Crater Grimaldi and approximately 10 miles beyond the Terminator. Very low on fuel, unable to take off. Anybody hurt? Only fatality, Dr. Werner. He died during the establishment of the radio relay, 11 miles from our present position. This relay is the means through which we've established contact with you. Are you in any immediate danger? No, sir. We've got to work this out. I'll, uh, I'll call you in exactly 60 minutes. In the meantime, don't worry, the Space Force won't let you down. Commodore, this is of the utmost importance. After you get me the Pentagon, call an emergency staff meeting here to discuss the possibilities of the situation. We must do something about this landing on the moon. Don't worry, and good luck. Over and out. I wonder what he intends to do. I have the vaguest idea. At least we aren't going to have to play Adam and Eve. We're spared that. Oh, you! <laughs> well, you needn't act so pleased about it. Hey! Speak 
Com to Magellan. General Green speaking. Come in, Magellan. Do you read me? Magellan to Spacom. Yes, General. More speaking. Colonel Bright Eye standing by, sir. Good. Now pay attention, Bill. Now that you two are on the moon, stay there. Do you understand? Yes, sir, but I... Pay attention and don't interrupt. The Joint Chiefs have conferred with the President and it's been decided to change your mission. You are now moon base number one. You will remain where you are and show the flag until such time as you can be relieved by a larger permanent force. In the meantime, ration your water, food, and air to last at least 10 days. That's within safe limits based on what you had. And we'll undertake to get more supplies over to you in that time. Colonel, you've had drone pilot experience. Bill, and you've read board your ship's radio equipment to permit it to jockey supply rockets down? Well, I guess so, sir. I'd better be able to. I'll have one of the electron pushing boys advise you on it. I know it can be done. They've already told me so. Uh, that'll be all now, moon base number one. But don't go away, Bill. Oh, Colonel, I have a classified message for Major Moore only. Will you be so kind as to go aft and close the hatch? Huh? You heard what he said down below. Very well, sir, if you say so. Oh, Bill. Scramble code E, combo two. Yes, sir. Over and out on clear. Standing by on scramble. You read me, Bill? Yes, sir. Take off your rank, son. This is man to man. Okay, Pappy. Spill it. How's it with you and Bright Eye? Still sore at her? No, uh, she's a pretty good kid when you get to know her. Seems to me you used to be pretty sweet on her way back when. Well, that was before she got promoted. Tell me the truth, Bill, I gotta know. Could it be that you're still sweet on her? Tell me the truth or don't answer at all. Well, it could be. Pappy, what are you driving at? Now, now, don't get shirty, son. I don't like prying into your affairs any more than you like it. But I've just been talking with the White House. The President thinks, and so do I. Well, put it this way. You're gonna be shut up in that tin can with a pretty young woman for weeks, maybe months. Public opinion being what it is, it'd be a lot better for everyone, for the country, for the service, and for you, if you two were married. What? Now, think it over, boy. I can't give you an order on this, but uh, think it over. Listen, Pappy, she wouldn't have me on a silver platter. Are you sure? Maybe you haven't gone about it right. Well, but, but you don't understand. She, uh, she has no use for me. Have you tried asking her? May I come up now? It's lonely down here. Oh, sure, I, I was just going to tell you that the general was through. What did he say? Well, uh, oh, well, uh, nothing. Oh, look, Bright Eyes. Yes, Bill? I, uh, I was wondering if, uh, if you could, uh... Could what, Bill? Well, I mean, could you, uh... Yes, yes. Oh, skip it, but we'll take it up later. Let's see what's in it.
Did they send everything we need? Bright eyes, it's Christmas. Baycom, come in, please. Baycom to Lunar Base. I want to talk to General Green on a secure channel. Colonel Brighteye speaking. Yes, ma'am. Scramble code F, combo one. What is it, Bright Eyes? Any trouble? No, not a bit, Pappy. But you know, we've promised to do something. Yes, and a good thing, too. What about it? Well, if you expect me to go through with it, there's something you've got to do for me. You just got to. Well, at this point, you can just about write your own ticket, if I can do it. What is it, kid? Well, it's this. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God to join this man and this woman in the holy bonds of matrimony. You take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. I do. You take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, to love, honor, and obey, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. I do. Who giveth this woman? I give this woman. Take her left hand, place the ring upon her finger. By the power vested in me, I pronounce you man and wife. Don't go away, kids. The President of the United States wants to speak to you. Major Moore, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I have a wedding present for you from the people of the United States. On my recommendation, and with the unanimous confirmation of the Senate, you are today promoted to the rank of Brigadier General, United States Space Force. You will consider yourself detached from USS Magellan and will at once assume command of US Moon Base Number One to guard and protect it for the benefit of all the free peoples of Earth. Congratulations and God bless you both. You like your wedding present, dear? And I didn't get you anything. Oh 